Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. You join me here. This is actually Christmas Day. I've snuck off to make this vlog. My family downstairs, they're all cooking and preparing uh, dinner for, for, for us. It's quite complicated because we eat the traditional British Christmas dinner and an Italian uh, which Italian dinner so it's like so it's double the amount of food it's, it's frightfully complicated but uh, the, you know we we start eating so late because it takes so many uh, levels of pre preparation and you know we, we have everything lasagna to everything you could possibly imagine anyway um, so I snuck off upstairs this is the, the guest bedroom uh, with a, this beautiful old desk fold-out desk uh, that used to be my grandfather's, so we don't really have room for it anywhere else, so we, we put it in the, um, the guest bedroom. Uh, so I've, I've snuck off, I've snuck off to do this vlog. Um, it's been really weird not doing any vlogs, but anyway, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. I've been having these two on my wrist non-stop for the last couple of days. Beautiful bl brightening navy timer there, and the marathon in the mid-size on a camouflage uh, strap there. So I've got New York time here and local time here. I'm starting to think I don't need a GMT. I mean, uh, well, well, that's a whole nother discussion. But anyway, guys, let's roll the credits and get into this uh, kind of off the cuff vlog. Now, first of all, I want to say a big Merry Christmas to everybody that celebrates Christmas and happy holidays uh, to absolutely everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic time with your family. Um, it's that right now, uh, my family are downstairs. We have uh, quite a few people have flown in. Uh, for some reason, uh, my family is spread across three continents, so um, which makes Christmas a little bit dif difficult. So one Christmas I have in New York with my American family, and then I have uh, one Christmas here with my British side, and then my Italian, so it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a difficult thing, but uh, we get there anyway, we persevere. So, uh, first of all, on the watch front, if you've been in the Facebook group, you would have seen that I have indeed pulled the trigger on the, the uh, Gigaro Seiko, the one that was famously in Aliens, I've had a watch crush on that that watch since childhood. Actually, it's not a watch crush. I think it qualifies as as uh, real love. But we obviously I haven't seen the watch in the flesh, so I ordered it from Japan yesterday. I put a post on the Facebook group. I wanted to ask you guys your opinion whether the I should go for the um, black coated one or this kind of. I thought it was stainless steel and it was brushed, but actually it's coated in this kind of matted, kind of silver coloured coating. I just I just adore it. I think it's so cool. It's so 80s. I'm not sure if it speaks to me more because of the film and because of that kind of childlike connotations with the Aliens franchise. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the original. I love the, um, the Ridley Scott original It's a, with the H.R. Uh, Geiger artwork. Uh, the Cameron one which the watch features more in, I think, predominantly in the Cameron one. It's a good sequel, but it's a totally different f uh, film. It's like the, the original Aliens, Alien, sorry, the Ridley Scott one. It was more of an art film, really, if you, if you look at it. It's, it was almost like a European art horror sci-fi film, whereas the second one was an action film. It was, had overtones of kind of, like, it was like Vietnam, but in outer space with aliens, <laughs> you know? You know, so it was very mil militaristic, and but nevertheless, it's a fantastic franchise. Big fan of the, uh, I have the comics actually, and big, big fan of the, uh, the the movies. Definitely, you know, science fiction that doesn't suck, you know, because there's a lot of cheesy, terrible science fiction. But anyway, um, it's a childhood dream, you know. So hopefully, uh, it will arrive, and I'll like it. Who knows? Um, but you guys know, I'm going to give it an honest review, and I just think it adds a, a level of coolness to my collection if it's if it's a winner. But anyway, so that's my little kind of watch news. Another thing arrived just for just in time for Christmas. I've got to say massive thank you to my friend Rainer 
He of course wrote a beautiful, um, beautiful handwritten note on lovely paper, wishing me, um, wishing me a happy, happy Christmas and all the rest of it. So Rainer, thank you so much for this. He has sent me a whole bunch of catalogues. I mean, beautiful, beautiful. So I got the, I got a Nomos catalog, just absolutely stunning, beautiful, beautiful Nomos here. Really, really like this brand. I think I will get a Nomos at one at some point. Bauhaus, clean, very clean, tasteful, classic designs, absolutely stunning. So Nomos is here. We've got um, a beautiful. This is Union Glasute. So there's a obviously, as you guys so correctly uh, inform me, Glasute is, is a town in Germany. I'm not sure if it's a city or a, or a large town, but a lot of the big watch companies have their factories. So you'll they'll have you know the name of the company and Glasute with added on. So there's Glasute Original. There's there's, there's uh, Union Glasute. The, some absolutely stunning, stunning watches. Let me just show you a few from this brand, tastefully done, with the classic Mercedes in the background. I mean, what more could you want? It's it's elegant, it's stylish, it's classic, just gorgeous. Just look at these. Just look at these. It's. I mean, Germany definitely is is. Um, I you know I I'll say it here. I've already said it. I've been thinking about going to Germany. But next year, I absolutely want to go. I think for me, it's it's a whole new frontier of watches. Obviously, I'm going to still be into Japanese timepieces and, and Swiss timepieces. Obviously, that's the core of my collection. But I think Germany is, is highly overlooked in the mainstream. Uh, they have, if not uh, one of the most prestigious history in watchmaking. Obviously, we have the young young hands, which I am, I'm not going to tell you which young hands I have, but I mean, just just look at that, guys. Just look at that. An absolute pure, pure class. The the Meister te telemeter here. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, yes, it is a bit like the Navi timer, but I still think I would like to get it. They have, of course, the Max Bill collection, all the rest of it. So we'll have a closer look. It's quite interesting, new kind of. Any digi watches as well. What else? A stunning, stunning, absolutely gorgeous Panerai. This has got to be the best catalog I've ever seen. The photography in here, you know, it, it, explaining about Panerai's history, beautiful illustrations. Let me show you some of the photography. Really stunning, beautiful Panerai's. I'm, I'm start. They're starting to grow on me. You know, look at that A beautiful yacht. You know, one day I will, I will definitely have to do a vlog from a yacht. Maybe my godfather's yacht or something. Uh, it has to be done. Absolutely stunning photography. I'm almost more impressed by the photography than I am of the watches themselves. I oh, God, I, I do love that. That little pop of blue. Can you see that? Can you see that, guys? That little pop of blue on that second hand. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's the, uh, this is the Luminor 1950 Terratrapante, which is an eight day uh, titanium. It is 47 millimeters, such a shame, such a shame. But you know, they do do smaller Panerai's, so that's going to be definitely worth a look. Uh, what else? More Young Hands, we'll look at that in more detail later. Actually, it's more of a poster. Maido, which is another quite an interesting brand that deserves more attention. Very classic. Very classic. I mean, this is a Swiss brand. So, you know, so we've got a mix of kind of German and Swiss watches, obviously. And last but not least, this is a, a Mo I'm not sure if you could see that embossing there, but it's a R. Mule and Zon, which is another German company with a very kind of rich, prestigious history. Beautiful photos, photography of uh, watchmaking there. And I'll just, and look at that. Look at that. Now, that is pure class. It doesn't need bling, it doesn't need gold, it doesn't need, it just, it's just elegant, refined, absolute pure class. This is, this is, so, this is an area, I think I do need a real proper, proper dress watch. And I think if I have my, my, my Swiss 
my Swiss and Japanese sports watches, I think a, a really nice quality German dress watch would really smooth off, it would really com complement my collection. Okay guys, so thank you very much to my good friend Rainer for sending me this beautiful, generous gift. Uh, I, I hear there are some more gifts on the way. Maybe I'll share some of my gifts with you guys. But anyway, let's, uh, let's cut to the rest of the vlog. All right, guys. Just thought I'd update you. I've, uh, I've had a, diff a change of heart. I've put the Speedy on. I've put the, as my Christmas watch, got the Speedy on and I've put it on the Bond uh, NATO. Actually, I'm not sure if it's the Bond. I think the Bond, the red is in the middle or maybe the green. I can't remember. Anyway, does it really matter? It's, it's Christmassy colors, so I thought, why, why not? And that the Speedy just goes with absolutely any color whatsoever. So that is, so that is my, um, my Christmas day watch. On the other wrist, let me just show you quickly the other wrist. Of course, I have the Marathon midsize on this beautiful camouflage strap, NATO. I really, I really do love the uh, the midsize. It's become it's become quite a favourite of mine. Definitely a favourite. Just absolutely adore it. Anyway, so that's my update. I <laughs> I had the Breitling on, but I've uh, I've decided to change halfway through. So anyway. As you can see, I'm in the, uh, the spare room. Uh, I've snuck off again to change my watch for the, I don't know, third time today. <laughs> Let's get on with the show. And welcome to a closer look at the top 10 presents I received this Christmas. Now, uh, I was gonna include my laptop, but actually, technically, I started using this a little bit before Christmas on the channel because uh, my, my old laptop just couldn't handle editing anymore so I had to kind of u start using this Christmas present the highest spec I could get in a laptop so I can do all my videos on the go and it works like an absolute charm so now I've got a ton of footage to edit and share with you guys so a bit of a backlog now but this machine is definitely a huge upgrade so I'm not going to include this top t uh, in the top 10 this is f probably the first present I wanted to share with you uh, and this is in no order of importance, but this is the Brett's uh, Etiquette and Modern Manners. Now, those of you familiar with the Brett, the Brett's will know that it's a school that in London, people from all over the world, very usually quite wealthy and well-to-do people, send their kids to the Brett's and it teaches them all kinds of manners. And, and this book is excellent. It, it, it is dated, it came out in 1981, I believe, from the, the Brett's school, uh, but it has, I mean, everything from how to carve ham <laughs> uh, to how to be behave, literally everything you could possibly imagine, even how to write a letter, who to address to, dinner seating, um, how to position knives and forks. I mean, this, this stuff is not essential, but it is pretty good as a reference book just to pull out if, if you do, you know, um, if, if you are hosting an event or maybe going to an event and, and there are certain uh, kind of customs or, or you want to know how the correct way. So pretty cool book and I must say I'm quite impressed with it. So that's definitely in my top 10. Of course another present was socks. You guys know I love skulls. Uh, so these little uh, socks, I, I only wear black socks. So finally I have something with a little, <laughs> little bit more personality. So that was cool. Now this is a really cool gift. Those of you who remember, uh, my grandfather had several Rolls Royces and uh, the, his favorite was the Silver Cloud and this is actually the Silver Cloud 2 from A View to a Kill which is almost the same as my grandfather's Rolls only I think his had special um, I think he had his crest and certain things customized in the car I'm not quite sure what but um, I will have to find out but this is actually official merchandising from View to a Kill and it's, it's all its other names from the James Bond franchise uh, and it is the official if we see where is it uh, United Artists Corporation so it is official merchandise really nice little model it has the little the little famous little Rolls-Royce 
Angel or whatever it is on the front with a little bit of the gravel drive. A View to a Kill was, I think, with, was it with uh, Roger Moore? I, I can't quite remember. You Bond guys, I'm, I mean, I like Bond, but I'm not like obsessed with it. I'm not like one of these guys that's completely obsessed with it. Of course I love the franchise, but I'm not, you know, I don't know every detail about every film. Uh, but really cool little thing to add to the and it just happens to be the one that my um, my grandfather had so really really cool little present there. So what else have we got? This is another little book. Actually I have this book in New York. Some of you may not know but Winston Churchill was loved painting and after the war he suffered quite heavily from depression and he would paint these fantastic beautiful landscapes. So this is a little uh, book by Win Winston Churchill uh, a little guide on, on painting and the one I have in the States actually has his paintings in it. This one is more of the text, more of a kind of guide uh, to painting. Um, so this kind of complements the other one. So it's a really cool, little, lovely little thoughtful book that somebody's, uh, that somebody's given me there. So I really love that. Moving on, of course, Florists of London. Those of you who've been asking me to do a perfume uh, video uh, Floris of London is my go-to perfume, my go-to scent. Uh, this is the aftershave, and I have the Eau de, de Toilette. This one is actually I. This is my old one. I love the 89, and this is the number 89. This is my favourite. Floris is the second eldest after uh, Penhaligons of London. Floris has been been used in the family for generations. It's a royal warrant holder. It's the second oldest, uh, second eldest perfume maker in London. I think third in the world. I think I might, I might be wrong about that, but it is a highly prestigious brand. I mean, actually, funny we're talking about James Bond. There is a James Bond fragrance. I forget which number it is. And funny enough, Winston Churchill all, all had a favorite number as well. So, uh, but this is my particular 89. I will return to the florist and do a thing on men's fragrances. I will return to this, to men's fragrances in the future. But uh, this particular one, this is my choice. So that's really, really cool. What else have we got? We got another little car. Now this is really cool from the 70s. And this is a real matchbox car. And it's still got the original price of £2.50. £2.60. This is an absolutely beautiful little model. This was when Matchbox was made uh, in England. It wasn't uh, outsourced overseas. Got the original packaging. So this is from the 70s. But just look, look at this beautiful car. Just absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. So we got the rolls. We got the florist there, we got the, the socks and the book. So this is the 1935 Auburn 851. Now you guys know, I like cars, but I don't like modern cars. I like cars, everything past the kind of 50s just doesn't really interest me. I mean, look at this beautiful machine. Yeah, it was, it was a death trap, but look, look at the shape. Look at that, it's a, it's, it's a thing of absolute beauty. They don't make cars like this anymore. I just, modern cars just don't do anything for me. It's like, it's like skinny models, you know, they just don't do anything for me. You've got to have some curves there. You've got to have a bit of, a bit of uh, flair, a bit of style. These modern things just don't float my boat. Sorry guys. <laughs> I know I get asked all the time about what cars I like. Well, this is the kind of car I like, you know, <laughs> 1935. Auburn 851. There you go. That's, to me, that's an automobile, not this modern rubbish. Anyway, sorry to be a little bit, I'm getting a little bit snooty there. I do apologize. Anyway, moving on. Of course, this was a really, this may seem not much to you, but this soap, these are specially made in Florence. This is another little present here. Uh, you'll recognize the Ponte Vecchio. This is from Firenze where I lived, I studied there for two years, where I met my wife. In fact, I actually, I actually uh, took my wife on a, on a very romantic walk and I remember that day and I will never forget it. So this is very special. This soap comes from Italy and this is what I had all the time when I was in Florence. And, ah, the smell of it just brings it all back. So this is Dolce Vivere, 
Sapone Naturale, this is of the highest quality, free from all that modern nasty yucky stuff. Really, really high end, super. You know, this is this is made in a little factory, been there for generations. It's a kind of blue iris, morning dew, and laurel. Absolutely, if only you could smell this. It just smells divine, absolutely divine. So this is very magical for me. This is was sent to me by a friend from back in Italy. So very, very special. Uh, let's just clear some space here. Another book. Here we have. This is from. Let's just move that back. This is from Hannibal, the uh, the television series. Now, Hannibal itself, the uh, the franchise, very fascinating. I found the the television series very well written, but the artwork, the production value, really fascinated me. And as you can see, look at this beautiful embossed. It is very gory. In fact, I'm not going to flip through it too much. There's there's Mads Mikkelsen, but it is. The costumes, the script, the casting. I'm a huge Mads Mikkelsen fan. Even the food photography was was outstanding. A really amazing series. Very dark, very violent. Uh, not for the faint-hearted, but you know some of the outfits were absolutely incredible. And, and I mean, look at Mads. Just look. I mean, a bit of OTT with that tie, but but you know his suits, his tailoring, and this was absolutely outstanding production quality uh, the photography the actually look at the food photography is just absolutely stunning it's just bordering on the macabre all the time um, but really I, he's he's quite an interesting character when he was talking about his inspiration for the role uh, in comparison to Anthony Hopkins' uh, portrayal of, of Hannibal Lecter he took he who was basically playing the devil, you know. Um, so there's a fantastic. This is one of my favourite scenes. Really stunning, stunning couple of order, and I just, I just, absolutely, I'm not going to show you. There's some very gory, very disturbing. I'm going to skip all that. Very disturbing. Oh, there's. Uh, my God, she's got better with age. She really has. Gillian Anderson is. Uh, whew. God, I, I, she makes me speechless. She really <laughs> does. <laughs> Even in the X Files. But beautiful artwork, beautiful photography. I'm actually more impressed by the production of the show rather than the show itself, almost. Um, anyway, I haven't seen the final season, so I'm really looking forward to it. Right, the last present, well, that my darling wife gave me was of course a complete box set of Wagner absolutely stunning we open it up and we have let's just pull these out a little book at the front explaining uh, giving a, a, a full you know about the um, the singers and the conductors and the, the background in the orchestras and um, and then so for example if we look at Tristan and Isolde we have a very basic, you know, two people kissing. Obviously, this is this is what I'm named after this particular opera. So really cool. Um, oh, I better put that back in the in the right place. There we go. So we have almost all of his major works. My particular favourites: Paris Fall, Tristan and his older, obviously, Renzi, Tannhauser. Uh, which one do I like as well? To be honest, I like them all. <laughs> I like them all, but uh, pretty much, you know, my, my three favourites are probably Renzi and um, Tristan and Zola Paris Fell. There we go, and Tenhauser. Those are probably my four favourites, but fantastic recordings. Must have cost an absolute fortune. Uh, you know, for me, Wagner is the absolute tops. Um, so I'm really chuffed to bits with this. Absolutely love it. So massive thank you to the wifey. This along with the computer. I mean, yeah, that's that's definitely true love there, isn't it? <laughs> chuffed to bits with that. So what what a what a little fantastic little hoard of presents we have here. Absolutely fantastic. Couldn't could not ask for more. Let's put this. Let's move that over there. Let's put that there. That's all of them together. Uh, what else are we missing? So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and last of all, last but not least, so that's nine here. Last but not least, of course, 
the classic. I couldn't not have a Christmas without something from Fortnum's and Masons. Uh, those of you who have ever been to London, you cannot go to London without going to Fortnum's and Masons. They have the best tea in the world, along with a lot of the best things in the world. That store is absolutely another um, Royal Warrant holder like Flores. They're, they're, they're a real institution, high end luxury goods from food products from all around the world. We also get a big hamper from them. And again, it's been a family tradition for several hundred years. You have a look at the Fortnum's and Masons video I did last year when I was in London. So of course, the most classic of all, Earl Grey classic. So lovely little stocking filler there. So fantastic, I'm gonna put that there. Fantastic, look at this stuff. Uh, along with my new laptop, I am over the moon. Okay guys, please let me know your favorite uh, presents down in the comments below. I really wanna hear what you guys got. Anyway, let's take it back to the outro now. Okay, welcome back guys. I just wanna sign off um, wishing everybody a very Merry Christmas and, I'll, and I will be back hopefully in a couple of days with some vlogging from London. Okay guys, thank you very, very much for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful, and I'll definitely see you in the next one. Okay guys, ciao.